Are you looking for a faster video? Well, today it's a live stream and I know you're probably looking for a really nice and tidy edited down video, but I have ways for you to make it faster. You can click that little gear on the YouTube settings right there on the video and adjust the playback speed. Make me sound like a chipmunk and it'll go a lot faster. You can also look and see if there's timestamps for this project in the description. And if you're on a desktop, you can hover over the time bar at the bottom of the screen and see if it's chunked up into chapters. And then that way you can go directly to the step you're looking for. And lastly, you can also tap on the screen on the right hand side of the video picture or on the left hand side to make the video jump ahead forward or backward if you're on a mobile device. And you can adjust that amount in your settings so you can have complete control over how much it jumps. So if you are on a desktop, you can use the fast forward or the rewind and that will make it fast go faster as well. You can also enable subtitles and the little CC on the screen will enable closed captioning. That way, if I I am a little bit harder to understand with that double playback speed. The subtitles might help you out. All right, well, I know that it's not a nice little edited video, but if you sew with me, we'll get there together and it'll be lots of fun. And now for the live stream. Happy sewing. Hello, happy Saturday. Let's see, this isn't quite straight, is it? There we go. That's better, huh? <clears throat> How's it going? Hey, Beverly, Barbara, and Anna. How are you? Nice to see you. Uh, I think I'm going to just brighten up the um, table. Oops, I don't need to double click that. That, there we go. Something like that. I think that looks a little better. Hi, Danny. How's it going? Oh, I know this is such a weird time for me, um, but I have another thing in the morning on this Saturday of the month, so I couldn't make it. Hey, Ray. Um, and I really wanted to squeeze this in this month, or really, I just like, I really want this, and I feel like I have the time to do it. So, hey, Margaret. Hola. <laughs> How's it going? So... I've never done a capsule wardrobe and granted this is pretty casual what I'm doing but um, we started this group in the guild called capsule wardrobe like a couple months ago and I haven't been able to participate in it very much but what I realized is the kind of capsule wardrobes I want are I want an outdoor one for like all my clothes working in the yard because I'm using my regular clothes since all my other outdoor clothes have just kind of died <laughs> so and some of them just don't fit you know how you use like your your like bad clothes to work in the yard. Well, I don't like being uncomfortable out there. I, then I don't want to do it. And then I wear my street clothes and then I'm in this bad cycle, right? So I just decided that I'm going to make myself um, a pair of pants. I want a sunblock top to throw over other clothes. Um, overalls, a tool belt, and I already have a jumpsuit. And the jumpsuit's pretty heavy, heavy duty because it has a cordura in the sleeves for protection against like cactus and stuff. So. So this is my little capsule wardrobe for outdoor clothing. And, and then the other one I want is for loungewear, like for pajamas and stuff. So I don't look so, I don't know, like just sloppy. <laughs> so yeah, right Beverly? I know, crazy, crazy. Hey Amy, how's it going? Don't know if you'll make one of these, but you sure, yeah. <laughs> I'm sure you learned something. Yeah, nice. Yeah, I mean, it's more, of, I thought like, I just feel like doing this off camera. People might be into this. It's that time of year, so. Yeah, Barbara, right? Yeah, and I do have a couple of, like I have an apron. I do actually have, you're reminding me, I have a gardening apron, but I don't like the long strings. So I'm gonna make mine with a snappable belt. So I did this quick drawing and so, it's gonna be split. So this is one little tool belt and this is one little tool, not belt, but, and then it's open in the back. So it's split in the back. So basically it's over each leg. 
And then a buckle in the front, which I won't even really need to adjust once I get it on, right? Because it's only going on me. And then I want it to hold a few things. I didn't bring everything, but I brought some safety goggles that I wear. I have this trowel. This is my favorite trowel and I found it in our first house we owned in the yard. Um, my felt, please do not shame me about my Felcos, but they're really bad. But my, th this isn't even my one I use. I use another pair usually. These are really bad though. <clears throat> A pair of gloves. Oh, and this is another pair of safety goggles. So I know I want my pockets to be able to hold, especially these three things, plus my eyeglasses and my phone. And then I'm gonna probably put a loop on it. I don't really like walking around with a hammer banging my knee, but you know. <laughs> so. <laughs> there you go, Anna, that's awesome. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I feel like it is nice to be able, cause then you don't have to say, oh, I have to wear this one pair of pants or whatever dress that has pockets. You can just put this on and you can just keep everything in there. Um, I want the split because, you know, like when you squat down on the ground and if you have a tool belt with stuff, it just ends up riding up because it can't sp spread out, you know? So that's why I want it to be split. My original idea was to make something like this and I wanted it integrated in the waistband of my pants so I could just wear gardening pants and the tool belt was in there. Um, and then I, I kind of thought better of it because I was like, you know, don't do that because you might not want the tool belt on all the time. Maybe you'll want to go to the store, you know, like the hardware store real quick. Um, but then I saw that there is a pattern um, by a company called Yuki Waffles that has a gardening pant with a tool belt built onto it. So they're way ahead of me. So you can check that out if you're interested. Terry, nice. Didn't get sick of me this morning. <laughs> so, so we'll see. I didn't really think through the pockets as far as like uh, drawing them on here. Um, so I thought I worked that out with you two guys together. I'm hoping I can get through this all today. I don't really want to be here till late, <laughs> you know, so I just want to have a tool belt. So the, uh, I pulled, I'm really doing good pulling things from my stash lately and this is no different. So one of the things I had at Chicken Boots one year was we did a subscription box and our and one of them was a, oh my gosh, I actually have one. Oh no, I don't. No, I don't. Well, I had a, we had a gardening subscription box and one of the things we did was we made a modified pocket bucket. I was, for some reason, I was just thinking this was it. It's not, this is, this is my pocket bucket pattern that I printed out at 80% size. So it's not even the same thing. I don't know why I thought that was it but we lined it with this fabric. And for some weird reason, I calculated what you cut for the ends wrong. And I still have this whole stack of cut out pocket bucket ends in this fabric. <laughs> Mistakes were made. So I thought, you know what? I have to incorporate this even though it's gonna be this tiny amount I'm using. I still have to use it, right? Um, and then I pulled some fabrics from the bindings that I have made and they're for sale on my site. You know, I thought these two would kind of go well. I'm going to use a, a, a webbing here. So this is, I'm going to use a canvas. It's a dark brown. Let's see if you can see it's kind of an espresso, you know, brown. Um, I pulled some other things. I got these snaps that Libby, a viewer, gave me uh, from a trip when she visited and she met Mullen. <laughs> so I got those out. I'm not sure I'll use those because I think they're hand sew, but I'm kind of intrigued by them because they're gigantic. Um, I have this scrap of two inch webbing. It's cotton. I feel like that'll be nice and cool. Uh, I've got a big old buckle. So that'll be my belt. And then I pulled together a couple of zippers and I'm really glad because these two, I accidentally bought these. I thinking they were jeans zips. They are not, look, look at that. You see how this just flies around like this? Not a locking zipper. Your fly will come down. <laughs> so I can use them on this, so perfect. <laughs> so that's my plan. These are my materials and we'll see if I can incorporate as much of this as possible. So you're watching as a passenger in the cat. <laughs> uh, 
That reminds me of like one of my favorite scenes of um, a movie called My Neighbor Totoro. There's this huge, gigantic bus that is a cat. I love that thing. In fact, I think I ended up with a little figurine of that particular cat and he's got like all these legs and he goes Rawr! and he, you know, it's amazing. It's amazing, I love it. So I got my dress form out because I was thinking that we could, like, I would just maybe drape something. I don't know, I don't think I need to drape it. The other thing I was thinking I could use is the skirt from the skort, <laughs> the skirt from the skort that I just made by five out of four patterns, the shenanigans skort, because the skirt itself is a, is a really simple silhouette. It's like this. And so, you know, I could take this and make my belt from that, right? That was what I was thinking. Or I could drape it, so. Um, that reminds me, I have a schedule for the month I wanted to share with you guys early on before I forget. So this is my June schedule. I'm streaming every week. I didn't stream much last month because I made it all about the So So Guild. And I did some special streams in there and some Zooms on how to buy fabric online, like how to shop for fabric successfully online. Um, we did a serger one where we all got our sergers out and we got more confidence. What else did I do, you guys? How to measure a pattern, how to pick your size in a pattern. There was something else I did. I can't remember what it was. So anyway, hey, Rennell, how's it going? Hello, Missy, sorry. <laughs> I saw the S at the end of Ren Ren Reynolds and I thought it was an E. <laughs> welcome, welcome. RC Auto Carrot. <laughs> Totoro preview, right? So excited for the score. How'd you figure out fabric before then? Yeah. So, all right. So here's my schedule for this month. So we're here at June 4th, the tool belt there, the first Saturday of the month. Next week, I'm doing the Sequoia cargo pants by Itch to Stitch Designs. I bought this pattern so long ago. Um, I don't have a big picture of it there, but I can show you if you like, or you can look it up. Um, the shenanigans skort. So I just made this and it is a knit skort. However, I'm going to make it with the outer, just the skirt in a stretch woven and I'm going to put pockets in it and it is going to be my gardening skort. <laughs> um, it's a, I'm doing a, it's a stretch woven rip stop. It's, it's a scrap that I have left over from making some pants. Um, and then uh, on the 22nd, 23rd, and 25th, I may be doing the Partner Overalls by Ready to Sew Patterns. A few people in the guild have made these, are really cute. Um, there's a lot of overall patterns out there and I just thought, you know what, I'm just gonna do these. I'm not gonna agonize over which ones to pick. So I picked those and there's even an expansion pack to make these a little bit more work wear related. Um, and then I'm also doing a pattern by them which isn't pictured there at the very end called the James shirt. Now of all these patterns, the James shirt is the only one that isn't very size inclusive. I usually try and always do patterns that include as many sizes as possible. Um, I'm still gonna make this because I think that it will be kind of, it's, it's kind of an interesting shirt and I'm gonna do it in sunblock fabric so that it's kind of like an oversized shirt I thought I had a picture there, but I guess I don't. Um, oh, I know why, because it was on another slide. If you go to the Instagram, you can slide and see. Um, and it's based on an old fashioned fisherman's smock, something that they wore over their hand knit sweaters to protect them. They're very clear on their website that all the patterns that begin with the letter P are size inclusive and all the patterns that begin with the letter J are not. And there are no plans to, to change the sizing on those. So I'm sorry about that, that I'm not doing that. I will probably be doing like almost the top size in their range. So I'm glad that they're honest about that. They're not going to be doing it. Um, I wish there, there was, but sometimes it happens. I don't always. So, all right, that's my schedule for the month. It's ambitious and I'm really excited. So 
Could you explain what makes a stretch woven a stretch woven maybe when you make the skirt? Uh, a stretch woven is, it has a, an elastic thread woven into the fabric, like jeans. You know how jeans um, can be stretchy? That's a stretch woven. Um, it is not a knit because it wasn't knit, it was woven. And I'm not trying to be patronizing by saying that, but it is really good to start thinking about like those terms and the difference between them so that you kind of clue into certain, you know, tips about a fabric you know, or clues, right? About a fabric to know a little bit more about it. If it's woven, you know, it's gonna have fibers going across and down, right? Lengthways fibers and crosswise fibers. If it's knit, it's a continuous thread, you know, and it's a chain. And then, you know, the next one is same thing. Oh boy. How do you draw knitting? <laughs> oh, don't mind me and knitting on the live stream. So um, that's the difference. So knit fabric isn't knitted with a stretch thread. It is knitted together and that makes it stretchy. It can be knit together with a stretch thread. It is not very common to see that. So that's the difference. And with stretch woven, they'll make part of the, five, the threads that's being woven with a um, elastic thread. So that's the difference. I am not a, a fabric textile science <laughs> expert. <laughs> that's my very brief uh, instruction. So what do we think? Do we want to draft this or drape it? Draping is going to be a little hard to see. Yeah, that's true, Anna. Um, that's sometimes you'll find that the fabric itself, like when you think about linens and hemp's, they tend to to relax and stretch out a little bit, as opposed to like something like this muslin, which is really tightly woven. Um, you'll also notice that some fabrics are stretchy going across like this. It's not stretchy, it just has some give, but in the length, there's really no give at all. And that's just inherent to the way fabric is woven. I don't really know why that is, but I know that to that to be true for most of the time. Do we think that's big enough? I want it to be like that big. All right, let's see if we can use my dress form a little bit. Let's get some ideas. How are you guys? I haven't seen you guys in so long. I missed ya. Can I do this way? Can I go this way? I can only go that much that way. Can you guys see okay? You don't usually see my wall over there. So I'm kind of thinking that, I'm kind of thinking that it needs to be further apart than I think it needs to be. You know what I mean? Maybe I want some shaping in there. Or, yeah, I could actually make it kind of circular. Oh yeah, I could make it kind of circular. All right, so if this is my center, I just want, I want like, I want basically like, you know, like chaps. I'm trying to do a shortcut way to drape this, which isn't a good idea. Let's, uh, arbitrarily make a little curve here. Just cut a little curve in there. I don't really want ruffle like that, right? See, I'm getting this little bit of a ruffle. So we can straighten it out a little bit. I don't want it to also be too tight. I want it to sit away from the body a little bit. So 
So let's say that that is the top of my waist there, like that. Oh, Delwyn, I saw you say happy Jubilee. Happy Jubilee to you too. <laughs> Donna was watching uh, earlier. She was going back to watching, I saw. All right. So my buckle, I'm not gonna drape this completely. I'm just trying to get some like, you know, some logistic stuff. You can see how far apart that I end up with not that much apron. So maybe if I go right about here, Thing like that. It's so funny. I used to worry so much about uh, getting ink on the dress forms when I was in um, college. Uh, no, I didn't used to, but on my own, I'm like, I don't want to touch my dress form with ink. <laughs> Obviously, a lot more uh, respectful of my own stuff than I was at the schools, huh? All right, so we have kind of a general silhouette to work with and uh, shape. So if this were on me, how would this feel? I'm gonna use you guys as a mirror. I feel like I might want more. The quick and dirty tool belt. It's gonna get dirty anyway, right? I'm gonna go up a little bit right there and back down. Take off my pins. Hey Nancy, how's it going? Do some right angles for sure, right? How long, how, I mean, I think that, I think that this could, should probably be longer than I think it needs to be, but the pockets can come up pretty high because I'm gonna have a belt above it, not, not built on as part of the tool belt, right? So my webbing is gonna sit here. So I have all of this real estate here so that, that could be actually long enough. Okay. Visually, that's what I'm picturing, but you know how sometimes you have an idea and then when you start kind of working on it, you're like, oh, it has to be a lot bigger than I think. And it's kind of a disappointment. So let's see here. We have four or no, seven and three eighths. I'm gonna do a right angle up there. I think ideally, uh, just to make it less confusing to make it, I'm gonna make it very symmetrical, but it doesn't need to be, you know? Hi, hey, Elizabeth, how's it going? <laughs> I know, it's kind of a weird day in time. Or not day, but time. Hey, Mafio. All right. Nice to see you again. I'm just gonna trim some paper off so that I can get a feel for it. All right. Let's talk about pockets. 
Now I have two of these, so I have more real estate than I think. So if I wanted to shove my, my gloves are actually bigger. Um, um, they're, they're like, they have a big cuff on them and they're cactus gloves. My mom just gave me these for a gift last year, which I haven't even used yet because this just, it doesn't really work in my house is a little prickly. <laughs> now I started like 20 minutes ago. You tried to tune in at two Eastern today. <laughs> All right, is that my 11 a.m. for you is 2 Eastern? <laughs> yeah, exactly. So if I were to have a pocket, like what if I did it at a bit of an um, angle, right? I feel like angled pockets are a little easier to get your stuff into. I wouldn't mind, these can be kind of straight across, right? Maybe even I would do this. What if I did this? I kind of like that shape. It's kind of interesting. We could do a pocket here um, and a pocket here like that, three pockets. And then on my other one, I could make this one, maybe this is the zippered one on each. And so it's this, this, and then glasses. And phone. I have my eyeglasses and my phone left. And that leaves one extra pocket. I already can't carry any of this stuff, so this is a huge improvement. Yeah, I, I briefly started getting notifications this year and then it stopped again. Oh, really, Nancy? Well, maybe I could do a few um, in the summer then that are a little later on Saturdays. I don't mind. On the Saturdays, I don't have the afternoon Zoom. I kind of like that. I'm probably going to bind the edge, so this would be a little bit rounded right here. Hey, Cass. Yeah, maybe this, I know, I think this time it's like, I feel like in the middle, like at 11 a.m., there's no way I would watch someone at 11 a.m. myself. <laughs> and that's because that's the best time of the day to do something. <laughs> but, you know, we're missing out all the Europeans, you know, like they can't come, this, it's a little late for them. But we get the Australians and Kiwis, right, Delwyn? <laughs> who, who we usually miss out on all the streams. All right, Aisha, have a good weekend. Nice seeing you. I know, right, Anna? Do any of you uh, set a, a reminder when you see these pre, like when these are scheduled? Oh, nice, Nancy. They're not getting any blueberries. <laughs> right? <laughs> I like this. Let's see how symmetrical it is right now. Ooh, it's pretty close. It's actually pretty close, so we can make this pretty symmetrical. Look at me being all symmetrical and stuff. All right. I love how I'll just be like, you know, I'm gonna do this thing <laughs> on YouTube, and I come here and I design it, you know, I used to have, I used to get months to design things and uh, now I'm just like, here we go, we're just gonna do it in five minutes. We're not gonna think it through. I am thinking it through. Right. Oh, really? Oh, okay. Oh, that's so interesting, Amy. Hmm, you always sat room, yeah. Okay. I'm gonna do a right angle right here like that I'm gonna do a right angle right here we're gonna round it a little bit 
right angle down here. We need the pocket now. I mean, that, that one right there is five inches. Let's make it five and a half. Now, hmm. If I made these three different pieces, It'll be easier to sew in the zipper. <laughs> That's awesome, Beverly. Okay, so let's divide this up a little bit more. That's, that'd be six and a half, and then this would be four and a half. So, hmm, so we could do three and five. I don't think this right here though, it's not big enough for my phone. You know what I mean? I would really like this thing. Look at my phone just dwarfs this thing. So maybe one of these, oh, that's around my hip though. Let's look at this on here again a little bit. Oh yeah, right, Beverly. I mean, we, we also, we get like into our habits, you know, and schedules and I've been moving around like a moving target on all of you. <laughs> so if I had this, this is what, I think that this would, I'd be wearing this actually down here, all right? I say that because I'm not gonna put this, these clippers in my waist up here, right? They're gonna be down here where I have flatter real estate <laughs> on my body. I think that this could be straighter like that. You too, I think you could be straighter too. A little bit like that. I could do double pockets. Could I make this long? Maybe I should make this longer. It feels pretty shallow. If I made it two inches longer. Hey, Walter, nice to see you. How's it going? Yeah, maybe if I made it two inches, one of the back pockets, maybe I, what I would do, I could put a snap. See, the problem with a zippered pocket, while it seems more secure, and it is in a lot of cases, it also really binds the uh, opening when you're slipping in something, and the opening has to be a lot bigger, especially if it's a, like a sewn where three sides, the zipper is sewn in three sides. The head of the zipper takes up like three quarters of an inch of the opening. So then, you know, you've lost some of that. <laughs> right, I know. My phone's huge. <laughs> I know. Exactly, Elizabeth. Or when I bend over, I don't want things falling out. 
I, mine's the large font format, the large print format of my phone, <laughs> so I can read it. <laughs> Ray, Walter has a greenhouse, I missed that. Where's that at? Oh, you're outside painting two by fours for your, green, for your greenhouse, that's cool. Oh yeah, Terry's a big gardener. That's awesome, Elizabeth. My husband has a normal size phone. Normal. This is just the pocket size, by the way. Remember, here's my apron. So I make it two inches longer. Hmm. Let me see here. What would it take to get my phone into my pocket? You know what I mean? Like, what size are we talking here? Because I don't think doing sideways like this. I think when you have stiff things, this going uh, long ways it, uh, around a curved body is doesn't work as well as this does. I put this in my back pocket, you know? So if I had a flap, that's where I was going with that, was if I had a flap, I could snap shut. I have the full opening to get the phone into. And then if it were two inches, maybe an inch and a half longer. <laughs> inch and a half longer. And it's bound around the edge. What if this, just one of these pockets went like pretty much to the top. Oh, I knew this would be logistically harder than it looks. You know, one of my other ideas, you guys, I was thinking is what if the bottom of this pocket had like a hole and my clippers did this. They poked out the bottom like that. The reason I think this is because I'm worried this was gonna poke a hole in my apron anyway. Right, Debbie? Ruler, scissors. <laughs> and to be fair, I actually don't bring my phone out very often, but occasionally I need it like you know, you just need it, like someone's going to the store to get something and they need to be able to call you if they don't have the thing you're going there for, for the outdoor project you're doing. <laughs> right. What do you think of this idea? Like the, like there's like a little hole there. Yeah, it would stabilize them. I don't know, Libby. I'm kind of hoping that because this apron is split, it'll spread apart. Whereas aprons, when I've had them before, they're across the front. And because of that, when I squat, yeah, I, I, they, they bind up and they, I poke things. But I'm hoping this is going to spread out and then stay away. <laughs> you know, Debbie, did you see that there's that new pattern by um, So Liberated? Isn't that what it is, you guys? So Liberated did the uh, studio apron. Studio smock, something like that, I don't know. Might be an idea. You could just throw your smock in, protect your clothes with threads, put your tools in there. That's so funny, I just got a call from one of the people that was in this photo. <laughs> I do think this has to be bigger. I think it has to be an inch and a half longer. I'm 
Okay. Let's see here. Right, Nancy? Yeah, I have one of those too. I have a little cart and I pull it around and um, I keep my tools in there and I put a little blanket in there or a towel because Loki follows me around and he'll just sit there next to me looking like he just wants to fall asleep and I'm like, then go to sleep, go lay in the shade, but he won't. So then I park it in the shade so that he'll um, go to sleep <laughs> and leave me alone. <laughs> Oh, nice. That's awesome, Beverly. Yeah, that is a really popular pattern. It's one of those sewing legend patterns. It's cute. All right, so this is my apron. And we're going to make it. I can always make another one, but it would be nice to get this pretty close to how I want it, right? And what did I, I pinned the muslin. Um, is this it? Where's that little, uh, oh, it was the piece of paper. That's funny. I was folding this down as if it was the um, apron, the apron waist, but it's not. This is. Okay. Oh, the paper on the roll I'm using, I used to own a plotter uh, which is the, you know, the large format printers they print patterns with. I used to own one of those when I was a pattern drafter. Um, and I had a, a little one, obviously it was that 36 inch uh, wide one. It's also called a blueprint plotter because a lot of architects use them. And I sold it or I gave it away actually. I gave it to someone in the stream. Um, and I had one roll of paper on it that was already open. So I've been using it as pattern paper. It's not typical pattern paper. It's not, it works. It's a little too nice for what I'm doing, to be honest. Like I would normally use dot paper or um, I sometimes, most of the time, I just use regular pattern paper, which is the manila oak tag stuff. I'm looking for a scrap of it, all this stuff. But uh, I'm just using this, this, this paper here because I don't have any scraps right now. But it works great and you can just buy it. It's, I think it's just a bond paper. I don't even know. I say it's too nice because I'm, I'm just doing first patterns. Dot paper is wider. Uh, you have to buy a big roll of it, but it's also, I don't know. That's what I used to draft first patterns on. Anyway, I don't know if you need that much information. <laughs> so let's see here. I want to do this two inches bigger. Yesterday I was washing dishes, Nancy. I was washing dishes and I had just been scrubbing something, you know, like blue scrubby sponge. And then I had to adjust something. I think the, the soap dispenser holder. And then I could not find the sponge anywhere. I, I couldn't find it anywhere. And all I had done was just stop scrubbing something and 
adjusted the soap thing and I couldn't find it. I was looking on the floor. I, got, I stepped out of the kitchen. I started to think I was on like candid camera and someone was playing a joke on me. Like it was, I had looked everywhere and then I picked up a cup that I didn't know I had even touched and the sponge was inside of it. So yeah, I can relate to the, where did I leave that? It was so weird. Okay, I also don't do pattern drafting with a rotary knife usually, <laughs> but you know, my boss lets me now. Yeah, let's try that. Let's try that. This is definitely one of those things where I feel like I will want it a certain way uh, visually, uh, but that won't be as functional. So I'm trying to be honest with myself and make it longer. So yeah. I hear that medical exam paper is really affordable pattern paper and it comes on a roll as well, which is kind of nice. All right, so let's trace this line on here. Is my fan too loud for you guys? Can you hear that? All right, I'm just gonna cut this line off so I visually see what I'm doing. And if I put a little flap, That could work. All right. I need another piece of paper though. Cause we're gonna have two different sets of pockets. You can't hear it? Okay, great. The borrowers, oh, I haven't heard that in a while. <laughs> Well, I'm the boss, so <laughs> that's why. <laughs> yeah, I, I, it's just my scissors are kind of, they're pretty overkill for doing a first pattern. I like using them and stuff, but they're, you know, we're just doing quick stuff. This needs to go. <laughs> yeah, another dimension exactly. All right, so is this my, this is my skirt or my skirt, my tool belt. That looks tiny. Just, you know, squatting. <laughs> right, 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 Amy, exactly. I just wanna to get to this so that we can start sewing because I'm really excited about having this tool belt. Tomorrow we're, we're renting a wood chipper, wood chipper and we're chipping up all this like, these branches that can't be used for anything but that. So I'll have my handy dandy tool belt. And I won't do this when I'm out there, I promise. All right, so for one of these, I'm gonna do that kind of swoopy curve. And on the other one, I'm gonna put a flap and just one side is a swoopy curve. But this pocket and this pocket, let's see, I think it needs to be more like this. 
This is the flap. And I want this po phone pocket, I think, to be on the back. So this will be the, um, the right apron pocket. All right. I'm going to sort the other one out first since it's symmetrical. And I'm following the line, the dotted perforations that I just created with the tracing wheel. So you can't see them, but there's like little holes in the paper. I could use my ruler. <clears throat> and then um, that just transfers the line to the bottom. Great for if you're copying a garment, you know, you don't have to take the part, apart the garment. All right, I'm going to take this. I think if I did that hole for the tool, it would still work even if I didn't have something in the hole, as long as the, the, nothing was in there that was really small. I could still use that pocket for other things. Okay, Walter, good luck with the painting. Nice to see you. Yeah, definitely. Definitely, I wanna definitely see your greenhouse. So does Terry. <laughs> All right. So let's see here. This is the center. What do I want? Okay, let's see. This right here is about, it's about 14 and a half inches. So it's like, you know, I could do like four and a half and four and a half and like that. Yeah, that, that works. So let's just do two and a quarter on either side, about right here. Two and a quarter on either side here. Is this the, this is, is this the whole apron? No, that is the pocket. All right. I don't want that to be too narrow at the top, you know? I think it's fine for those longer tools, but like this pocket, that's too long for those tools right there. So maybe one side could be shorter. Let's do this a little bit shorter. <laughs> yep, there you go, Terry. I don't really need to get my hand in there, but you know, let's look at it this way. Let's see if that visually works. See how narrow that center pocket is? I mean, I could get these in that one. That, that actually works pretty good. It's not too tall. Especially if I didn't, I could also reinforce the bottom. Maybe that's what I'll do. I'll reinforce the bottom. Does that make you guys feel better? Um, uh, Cause I could put a little piece of fabric that goes like this. I don't think I can get my gloves into this, this pocket. It's too small. It's also gonna need to be gusseted. Boy, this is getting to be a project, man. Okay. I think this would be safer on this outer edge here.
I could gather it. What should I do? Should I elasticize the top? Or I could pleat the bottom. Kind of Libby. I actually have been thinking about that. I kind of know where I like to put things when I'm wearing them in my pants and you know, like when I'm put, putting things around. Cause I usually put glasses in an overall pocket here. Um, and phone on the back and then my clippers on the other one, but the clippers in the other one is the one that makes me nervous. Yeah, I think I'm definitely gonna need to have some pleats. And I could elasticize the top, which would also help with security, keeping things in there. Narrow pocket could work for glasses, but I think these are flatter because these are pretty thick. I think that these could move. Let's see if this is the left pocket. This would be the the glove pocket then the glasses. This maybe I could slide these over a little bit. These lines, right? And then this would be big enough for gloves. These gloves are stinky. <laughs> this may end up just being a prototype, you know? And then maybe at the end of the month, I see how it worked. All right, so let's uh, let's make it bigger for some fullness. And maybe I'll just use this piece and actually tape some paper in there just, just to save some of this other paper. So let's just um, cut this apart. Actually, let's, I don't want it to get away from me, so uh, let's Add some paper here. All right, I'm about to horrify you with the amount of tape I use too, so just to warn you. This is this piece right here, so you can see what I'm doing. And I'm gonna add quite a bit, I think, of fullness. What are you guys all working on? Are you guys, um, yeah, you you probably should, Kathleen. inch and a half on that. Let's add an inch and a half on this. So I was going to do the canvas as the pocket. But now I'm thinking that maybe I should do the the um, something lighter weight.
I'm going to take three quarters of an inch off of this. And then that'll be the center line. And I can cut this on the fold. Okay, so then this, I think, is the fold right here, because this, hmm. Kind of rethinking this. I'm getting confused with my lines too. Move pocket. This was the edge here. Yeah. So let's do that. All right. <laughs> Kelly Anrick. Nice, still chipping away at that. You cooking dinner? <laughs> oh, the duet pants, that's right. I've seen those before. The pixie shorts from Twig and Tail. Oh, you're really on a Twig and Tail kick, huh, Anna? You're knitting, oh, that sounds nice. Deer and Doe Daytura tops, cool. Visiting your happy homemade so chic sleeveless blouse with frill. <laughs> that's a mouthful. So you're gonna to come to my uh, pants dress form bootstrap thing, right, Nancy? So you can give me tips. Okay. So this is the pocket right now. So now we need to get this pocket into here. So it'll have to gather along the bottom, not the biggest fan, or pleat, or pleat it. I should have marked the pockets on there before. So let's see, let's mark this pocket on here. We're gonna mark the red line here and here. Right? And then this is the center of this one here. Here and here. Okay. These are our stitch lines for the left pocket. Oof, this is kind of a winging it pattern for sure. All right, let me find my other. Is this my other one? This is it, right? Nope. Did I cut up my other one? Did I cut it up? I did, didn't I? Where's my right pocket? Oh, you guys, I think I just cut it up. Let's see. We'll shiver me timbers. All right. I'm about to get manila paper out because I'm feeling like I deserve it. <laughs> I am, I'm gonna get some. I'll do a better job on manila. Sorry, that's probably really loud.
clear the decks. All right. We're going to make two of these. Now I'll use my pattern scissors. Sometimes I'm a winging it person, other times, uh, I just need to do it the, the way I know best. All right, so we're gonna make a right and left apron just to cover all the bases. Ooh, a little out of practice there, here we go. This isn't, this is still not, <laughs> Not technically uh, the most accurate, but it's going to be better than what I was doing before. All right. We'll do our left apron here. Just gonna transfer these notches. We'll even do drill holes. All right. All right, so now this will be our right. All right, let's see. I'm not a big fan of like gathers to add volume for things like gussets, but they're, they're often, they function the best because the, the fullness is distributed evenly. But they're not very flat, you know, like I like pleats, um, but the folds of the pleats sometimes will um, limit the amount it can expand. You can get kind of hung up on them. They can get dirty too. Like, you know, like stuff gets caught in the folds, but um, I'm not gonna worry too much about that. All right, so this is where, uh, was this really one whole pocket? That is one whole pocket, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, there's one there on this side. On, on the other side, was this one actually symmetrical though? It was like right there. All right, well, well, we'll figure that out in a second. All right, so let's cut this out. All right, I'm gonna pick up one layer to notch just this one here. But these will both be probably, this will be in a seam. 
I mean, what if I used something like um, fold over elastic for the top? I think that'd be strong enough. Oh, I know, Nancy. Oh, gosh. Oh, wow. What shrink? Do you think it was the interfacing? I mean the interfacing. Do you think it was the um, stuffing? Yeah, I definitely know. I, I've never been able to steam a dress form because of the, you know, most of them are covered in cardboard. Like the professional ones are cardboard. So you can't get them wet. Okay, so this one would have also an inch and a half. And if this were here, we want this to have about three quarters of an inch apart. So then I know I'm at the right spot. And that would be here and here. Okay. We're basically making a very fancy prototype, <laughs> right? <laughs> I mean, I don't think the, I don't think fold over will be strong enough. You know, I love the idea of it. Yeah, that is, is that was, which one shrank, Nancy? Was it the, the second one or the first one you made? Cause I know the first one you weren't quite ha happy with. Was it at least that one? I have that one all sorted. Bummer. Okay. So for the right pocket, for the right pocket, the right pocket is going to have, this is my right pocket. It's going to have, it can have this like, curve like that one does but the back was going to have a a pocket for the phone with a flap over it to hold it in there so maybe it could just straighten out like this and i have room for the the flap that works that's simple hey michelle <laughs> how's it going Oh, wow. That's a bummer, Nancy. <laughs> Nancy. <laughs> is it ever, though, really easier? <laughs> I mean, if you're saying that that is easier, that kind of gives me an idea of what I'm up against with the uh, making my own. <laughs> Okay, that's my left pocket, but we're gonna straighten it out. Like that. And we're going to say the phone could go in there. So what was the deal with this one? That So my, my left one is my left one is this one, and my right one, left and right, right? I have, I can't be too specific, I'll never remember all this, you know? My left one is these, 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 right? My right one is wherever the heck my phone went, is the phone the back on the back side, a eyeglass pocket, and then a spare pocket. <laughs> Maybe a snack. I actually do want a little pocket for dog treats. Oh, okay. We'll each have the stuffing from both of them. Okay. Yeah. 
All right, so let's just worry only about the foam, which is this area here. And it'll gather up, we'll say, oh, this, that's right, this eraser is like weird. Here, and here, here, here. That's the center grain line. Probably barely see my stuff, sorry guys, my markings. We'll leave that right there, okay. Okay, we're almost to the cutting. The fun part. The more I figure out now, the faster it'll go. Maybe I could put a, a, like some sort of little small pocket on top of these pockets too. I don't want to be able to carry too much because then I'll be the, the pack mule, you know? No, I'm just doing the pants, Nancy. I'm a little nervous. I, I, I feel like I was, I was a little bit rushed when I did my measurements. <laughs> you know? I don't understand, like how is it going to know my butt and my back waist? I think I'll, I'll probably take the pattern pieces and drape it just to see how it's looking on my dress form, you know? What's special? special? Oh, these right here? Um, <clears throat> they are easier to cut accurately because the blades are really short and the handles are really long you get the greatest uh, amount of control especially like say you were doing a, an armhole you can really get into these really tiny curves incidentally I ha I've been kind of being cavalier with them you usually don't move these they sit here like this and you bring your pattern to them that's how you're taught how to cut I've had these um, since 1991. No, I've had these since 1989. <laughs> okay, this is my right one. I need a flap, but guess what? I have one from the, the Pockets skill building session. Where is that? Where's that stuff? Ooh, there might be one in here actually. Oh, there's one right there. Okay. Boom. Let's make, make this a little bigger, maybe? It's just a little bit. Not much though. Come here, Trixie. Now, you know, and Trixie will finally have someone to hang out with at night when I'm not here. Yeah, you want a pair, Michelle? <laughs> you might be able to, Nancy. I mean, it might be worth it. Right? You don't have anything to lose at this point. You know what I mean, Jelly Bean? So let's make this, you want your flap, I usually like my flap to be about a quarter of an inch bigger on either side of my pocket. For this one, we're probably gonna line it up with the edge there. So it's gonna hang off like that. That actually is probably enough. Well, that, this is my finished pocket, so there's no seam allowance to the right of this. And there is seam allowance on this piece. My binding would actually be right there, so that would actually be 
right there. I think I'm gonna make it like a half inch bigger. Yeah. I can always make this smaller on the fly, but I can't make it bigger. pocket flap so I have this pocket too and this is all going to be gathered up and our right apron still needs the notches though so we left this one on that side so we can copy that one and then this this one was narrower right that one was narrower so we can go to the right of this okay definitely being cavalier all right The drill hole is just so I can mark the top of my, my pocket, but um, it's not necessary completely, you know? All right, so what else did I want? Did I want anything else? I was talking about doing like a little treat pocket <laughs> or something. The flap. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, I kind of made that one a pretty standard size, but yeah, the pocket I'm doing is definitely not standard, right? Need you. I start doing like a little cool tool cleanup while I think about what else I want. Clean things up a little bit. Don't need you, you or you. I just hang my scissors on the, the wall. I don't know if you guys need tips on um, like putting things up, but it is helpful to have like a hook for your scissors then your tips aren't banging around. And then I sometimes hang my rulers off of pattern hooks. So these are the hooks that are holding my patterns up on the, cl the closing clothing rack back there. Um, but I just the other day put all of these on the wall with push pins because I was sick of pulling them off that hook. I, it was like behind there and I'd just be like, ah! Um, but um, Aisha, who was here earlier, she had a, uh, I think it was her, she uses a file pocket. And then, um, isn't it, was it Mafio that said she uses command strips? <laughs> you know those like sticky Velcro things you can put on the wall, but they have the hook ones? I thought that was really smart because you could put that on like, say you have a um, like cabinetry in the middle of your room or like your sewing machine is in one of those cabinets. You could put it on the side that way you don't have to stick to the wall, especially if you're like in one of those spaces where it's like a basement that doesn't have drywall, smooth walls, or um, attics that have the like slopes. I've had sewing rooms in so many different spaces, so I know there's all kinds of really unique setups besides just the dining room. <laughs> I don't know if you want to put the dining, you know, your rulers on the, the, the silverware cabinet, but <laughs> the vertical, Oh, the screw punch. It's a Japanese screw punch. This is kind of this is kind of the icing on the cake, Michelle. 
it's really awesome, especially if you're going to get other uses out of it for other like paper crafting, <laughs> scrapbooking, things like that. Um, this was probably one of the last tools I bought because, yeah, but I've had it a long time. You have to replace the tips occasionally. It comes with lots of different diameters. I can get the tips from Beyond Measure in London or the UK. That's where I get them. Um, and uh, they're really nice because you can't use a, a single hole punch for doing a drill hole that far into the middle of paper. So that's why I have it. But yeah, but it's called a, a Japanese screw punch. And it's meant for paper crafting, but I do use it on fabric. Just don't tell anybody. All right, my fabric's really dark. Oh, there we go, yeah. See, and that's the thing is like, I think Terry's right. I think nowadays they're so much more affordable, but it took me so long to find something like that. Um, and I've had mine for easily 20, 25 years. So I know that those are not 25 years. I have not had mine for 25 years. I would have loved to have had this 25 years ago. I've had it probably 15 years. I've had to replace the tips and that's it. But um, they've definitely become more, like I can find them now, which is awesome. And the, I didn't know you could get the, I didn't know where to get the tips until I saw Beyond Measure. Screw punch, yeah. Um, all right, so let's talk about elastic. Hmm. Gosh, my elastic looks like, you know, underwear. <laughs> Hmm. Hmm. Let's see what's down here. Oh, this was cut off of something. Hmm. <laughs> oh, you have a pattern notcher? Those are pretty easy to find now. My tip when you're using these is to use it upside down like this. Well, I don't think of this as upside down. I think of this as right side up. And that's so you can see your line where you're notching. Um, I know people will say, but you can see it right there. Not the same, it's not as accurate. Um, I have this brown, also Japanese, elastic. It's not very stretchy, but look how pretty it is. It's so nice. You can't tell. Never mind. <laughs> my my fold over elastic looks like underwear. I do think this could be strong enough though, you know. How else would I do this? Hmm. How else would I do this? How would I like it? If I do fabric, I can just put elastic in a casing. Robot voice. Really? Oops. Um, wait a second. I can't see the. I can't see the stream. Just a second. It says excellent connection. Is it me or you? Robot voice. Yeah, Waywack has it. Same with the screw. The not the screw punch, but the. This is one of my favorite tools. This is, I think if you're buying anything, one pattern drafting tool, this is the one I would get. Cause you can trace fabric through paper. It was weird for a second. Oh, okay. It must've been a YouTube thing. So my, I, my problem with doing fabric as the pockets is, Well, I just think it'll look dirty really quick. 
and not last that long, but what the heck, right? Where am I putting a zipper at? Anywhere? Hmm. All right, let me cut the main part of the apron. This uh, fabric is uh, a really weird shape. I knew it would still be useful though. <laughs> it is, this is a weird shape. I need two that are pretty much exactly the same. It's just the markings that are different. So we can cut this together right here. I think I'm gonna do a flap for the phone. Oh, okay. Oh, I see. I see. And I, I just don't think the zipper will be big enough opening. You know how like it'll confine it a little bit? Okay. Let's open it. Scrap, scrap, scraps. I still need two pockets. But I think what I'll do is I'll line the bottom of the pocket with the canvas. Maybe I'll even do the bottom part, the whole part of the pocket with canvas. I could do that. You know, like I could do, like a narrow piece and then the whole thing fabric. I like that idea actually. Um, let's do this. All right, so we're gonna, we're just gonna trace off a narrow strip and I'm gonna use fabric for the pocket. Oh, Amy, that's it, you're right. Um, don't I have, oh, there it is right there. I have this ancient piece of this, this Taylor's crayon. <laughs> Yeah. And then I could do like a two inch, maybe even more, like I'll do three and a half. Let me cut this off though. Am I on even on the, on the camera? Yeah, I am. So this will just be the reinforcement for the bottom of the pocket on the inside. No one will see it. Four and a half. Let's just do four, four inches. We'll do the crayon. Does ranch shrink much? Ooh. know. I mean, I, I imagine it shrinks, but I'm not, I'm actually not sure. That might be something you could actually Google. 
Uh, I'm not, I'm actually not sure. I don't feel like I've noticed it shrinking a lot, you know? All right, here's my pocket bottom. All right, now, this isn't really the fabric I wanted on last on my apron. I like it, but which one do we like? Oh, on camera it looks terrible, but it's really cute in person. <laughs> Oh, the color is terrible over here. <laughs> it's like, it looks so dated. Which one do I want? I feel like this one looks better actually. Yeah, let's do that one. I can do binding in this. All right. I saved one half yard of all the bolts that I made binding into, and I'm so glad. It's coming in handy right now. So I need a right and a left. I can get them both down here. All right. But I'm sort of tempted to try and get them out of this weird shape down here to save some fabric. I gotta put a face down. Yeah, maybe this, maybe I should just cut them both across. Yeah, I'm just gonna cut them down here. No, it's fine, Nancy. No worries, it happens. Instagram used to be so buggy like that. Do you guys remember that? You'd get like six of the exact same comment. <laughs> First time it ever happened, I was like, geez, lady, <laughs> calm down. <laughs> All right. This is my right. Oh, I wanna do two layers. Maybe I'll just line it with the other fabric. Hello, strawberry. How's it going? Two sizes. Oh my goodness. That's a bummer. Oh man. That's kind of rude, you know? You're like, one time. Yeah, we were just talking about this earlier today about how, um, like someone was like, do you, do you put your linen in the dryer? And it prompted this um, really good discussion because I was like, yeah, <laughs> I put everything in the dryer, um, but that's, that's me, you know? All right, so which one did I cut? Did I cut this one? because I know that that's how I'll, I want to take care of it. Like I just, I'm one of those people that just throws everything in the washer and dryer, you know? But apparently the dryer isn't really that great. Like it'll break the fibers a little bit. And I was like, shoot. <laughs> so then there's people talking about how you can soften linen if, you're, if it's too stiff. You don't want to put it in the dryer. You can soften it by soaking it in Coca-Cola. <laughs> And more than one person brought that up. So I was like, oh, I've never heard that tip. Linen is a protein fiber. Wait, is it a, it's not a protein fiber. Yeah, it's a protein fiber, right? I meant to ask Rachel that today. Yeah, I don't blame you at all. It's like those kinds of experiences really, uh, really really warp us don't they you're like oh, i'm never doing that again oh this is a one-way print Ooh, good thing i just noticed i promise this fabric looks much better in person i know it looks probably really dowdy and washed out on camera 
I'm cutting so fast right now and so cavalierly, I apologize. But I just wanna to get to the sewing. All right. You are here, Rachel. Is it, I was just thinking about, I was gonna ask this earlier about when we were talking about linen and stuff. Is the Coke, did you hear that? You weren't, you were, I couldn't tell if you were actually listening at that moment, but they were talking about linen and that they're saying Coca-Cola softens up the fibers. It's, yeah, that's what I was gonna say, it was cell, cellulose, but then I was like, why do I wanna say protein? I don't know what I'm talking about with that. Don't listen to me. All right. Now I need a little flappy flap. Where'd that pattern go? I've got this reinforcement for the bottom on the inside. I could even do it on the right side. I could even do it on the right side and it wouldn't be so much fabric showing. Tomcat Citri, oh, okay, cool. Yeah. Okay, this is the right. No, left. okay, it doesn't really matter. All right, so, but where's my little flappy flap? There it is. That's right, Amy. I know, I was like, wouldn't protein be an animal? <laughs> That's what I say. I so good. I know how to make patterns. Listen to that stuff from me. I don't need to step out of my lane. Don't you love it when someone who's you've been following for a long time, who does something really, really good, and then they're like, you know what? Um, I have just fallen in love with doing this other craft that I've never done before, and I really love it, and then they suddenly start talking to you like they're the authority figure on it. And they start doing how-to videos about it and stuff. <laughs> Gotta love it. All right. Um, let's move you all here. And I think I'm gonna get some interfacing for the flap. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I think wool dryer balls are a good idea. <laughs> Nancy, you always have such a good, uh, honest perspective like that, you know? It's like, it's so true. I think, I think the one thing that is probably one of my faults is that I'm not very sentimental. And I always tell this story about how um, my, my step-grandmother, we would go to her house and she had those um, like cute little soaps in the bathroom. And the funny story I tell is that she had some on a little dish in the center of a little four-person table that was in the kitchen. It was probably like where the kids ate breakfast or whatever, or the, her, she and her husband ate breakfast. So it was like the kitchen table, you know, it was like a little tiny table. And me and my cousins were sitting there one day and there was this little dish with chocolates sitting in it. And he reached in and he took a bite and it was soap. And um, in the bathroom, which was hilarious by the way, I was like a teen, you know, like a middle schooler. And, and then um, in the bathroom, there were these really pretty soaps, you know, like shaped like shells or flowers or whatever, but they, had been sitting there so long, they were fuzzy with dust and they were kind of gummy. <laughs> and that was the moment I was just like, see, you never got to use those soaps. Someone gave you those soaps. You could have just used them, enjoyed them, but you, now they're just sitting there looking really, really like, you'd have to throw them away, you know, which feels weird, so. <laughs> oh, right, yeah, I, I've knit a little bit with, um, Linen yarn, it is. It's tough on the hands. 
Yeah, exactly, Rachel. Yeah, they ha it's like it's like kind of like fermenting it, right? Not technically fermenting it. Okay. Um What do I have here? So right now I have my two aprons which I still need to mark left and right with the with the uh, markings, okay? So let's do that. Left. That's uh, not cut very good, is it? So this is why I like the screw punch. I can go like this and it'll transfer it. Um, I'm gonna put that a little lower though because that's pretty high. Like my, my pocket might not cover it. And on this one, we'll just mark the notch too. That, that's really narrow though. Let's move that over. Right, we'll do this. Well, actually we can do this on the right side because the pocket's gonna cover it. All right, we have the flap, which goes on the right one. So it's this one here. And you get one of these. We have our right pocket here, right? We have our flap. Oh, it's looking kind of cute, you guys. See, maybe I could do this reinforcement over the top of it so it's not so cutesy. I think that's what I'll do. Oh, I'm not a big fan of cutesy. All right, and then this is the left. There we go, okay. Apron, apron. <laughs> Nancy. All right, um, what am I forgetting? I don't need the zipper, I have the webbing, I have, um, I don't need this here or this. I don't need this. I got these snaps that Libby gave me, but I'm wondering if this might not be a good, um, I feel like the hand sewn, they may not hang up. Oh, and I was, I have this brown carabiner. I'm gonna put that on there somewhere. Oh, do I need a hammer loop? Let's just make some webbing strap. All right, uh, let me find, what did I'm coming over here? Snaps. I have magnetic snaps. I have magnetic snaps, but I there's I don't think I want to use them on this, <laughs> even though it's nice. They would be really, oh, you know what? I'll just use magnets. Wait, would that be a problem? Magnets with my phone? Is that, is that just a myth? Magnets near my phone. That's okay, right? Because I could just use magnets sewn into the flap. You guys are rotting linen. I feel like if I use the non-magnetic, I won't snap it. You know what I mean? Oh, really? Oh, now Velcro, that's an idea. I have Velcro. Velcro's kind of a good idea. 
I like the look of snaps. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> Here's the tabs, yeah. These would look cool. I'm just wondering if the magnets would grab other things. Yeah, I feel like if I have to worry about it, right? Maybe I shouldn't do it. So maybe Velcro, let's do the Velcro. I have a lot of that. <laughs> Let me find it. Should I put reflective tape on it? I thought it was right here. I mean, I have my rolls. Should we put some cute trim? <laughs> No. All right, well, I guess I know I have a whole thing of, oh, there it is, I see it now. Here we go. Okay. Pajama feet bottoms. This was the um, painting the non-slip stuff for the rugs. I don't get into this bin as nearly as much. Trims that my friend gave me. She has all these vintage trims. Okay. Sewing kits. Kind of hoping I had a good color, but I guess not. All right, so I'm gonna steal. Let's see. Do I want? I was hoping I had both sides, but it doesn't look like I do in a cut piece. Don't worry, I have plenty that it's on a roll. All right, we'll take this right here. <laughs> a button and elastic cord closure. I do like that idea. I used to make little scrunchies as a button loop. See, I have a lot of Velcro, see? <laughs> it's on this, um, this is how you get it. This is one inch wide though, so it's not the same as that, so, oh well. I was gonna try and use that. You end up having more of one side than the other. It's really annoying with Velcro. All right, everything's marked, right? We have elastic over there. We have the bin. We don't need these. So we'll just leave these over here to save us some space, the, the machine. Um, I was just gonna make a Loop is all. Or cut a piece to make a loop for, um, here we go, this will work. Actually this one will be better. You're fine, Nancy. So I shouldn't worry about the magnets. 
you know, I, I know like lots of wallets have magnet magnetic closures. So when I worry about it, I'm like, oh, that's right. There's like, you know, wallets that have it too. All right, so I'm just cutting this piece here because I think it might be nice to be able to make a, uh, like a strap, you know, like this. Can't remember why I wanted this. What did I want that for? Oh, to hold the carabiner. So I might want something smaller actually. Hmm. Hmm, 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 hmm. Hmm, okay, let me think about that. All right, let's sew. <laughs> let me uh, change my camera. The idea stems from old gadgets like televisions when much of the data was stored magnetically. Oh, okay. Michelle and I have nothing to worry about. <laughs> Is that what you're saying? All right. Hey, Noemi, how's it going? Yeah, that's right. My, my iPad has that. Thank you for telling me that. <laughs> yeah, so I, I could just use, like, I have these super strong magnets. So I don't even need, like, a magnetic snap. I could just use these. The camera looks like it's pointed at my door. It's so, it's so odd. The, like that would be facing straight at me. Isn't that weird? These cameras are so funny that way. Oh, interesting. How many old hard drives have you had? <laughs> okay, let's just switch over to the brown. Brown? No, we're gonna do cream first. Yeah. Ah, uh, yeah, see, Barbara, that's what I know, I know. Ooh. Are we thinking magnets? I feel like it feels secure. Oh, you used to build a lot of computers, okay. Okay, okay. All right, well. Oh, I'm gonna change my needle, sorry guys. Uh, I've been making mulch mats again. I've been up to my crazy tricks. That's why I feel like I, I just said or something. Um, and I know that I probably need to change my needle. I am really excited to have this little tool belt. Your geek in disguise. Thank goodness. There was some discussion in the guild recently about um, going to like a machine, a place to repair your sewing machine, a shop. And I know that there's one person in the guild who actually repairs machines. I haven't seen them in the guild for a bit. Um, so they're probably just been busy and stuff, but I, <laughs> I resisted the urge to tag them. Like, what do you think? Cause you know, it's like, it's like, you know, as a sewist, we all understand what it's like when you have this skill and people always want you to use it for them. <laughs> I thought, oh, I won't, I won't out them. <laughs> I need some fabric. Wow, it looks terrible. 
What did I miss? Oh, that's why. I love it when it's a straightforward solution. Oh, uh, they're okay for the sewing machine. I used to do that, but um, the, um, the problem with sewing with magnets on your sewing machine is that they stick to the machine. They're annoying. My hair is looking a little tired right now. I'm just going to tone down the brightness just a little bit. Make me look like I'm human. All right. I think I need to push my machine that way more. I think we're ready. <laughs> He'll deny everything off. We have it. It's live on the internet. <laughs> okay, so I think my first step is going to be to add the elastic, the little elastic casing. Where's my, here's my tin of magnet. I don't have very many left, but I have I have these, you can get sew-in magnets. I don't know if you know, but I, why is this, does this keep moving? Oh, that's the web, that's that. I thought that was the, the edge of the table and I was like, what? I just put that there. So um, if you're interested in playing around with magnets, you can get them so that you can sew them in. And this is nice because when you start dealing with magnets, like if, I'm, if I were to use this in the flap, the thing is, this little thing is going to move around in there while I'm trying to sew it in, or it will grab the throat plate or the presser foot, and then you have you run the risk of sewing it, and I've done that before. Um, so it's best to make the little pocket for it first, and then slip it in there, and then do the last stitch, just so you don't have to deal with it a whole lot. Or you can do this thing where you can get sew-in magnets. And then at least you can kind of tether it and it's not going to slide around. The thing is, these are hardly as strong as these. Like this is, these are pretty strong. I think I could, that's pretty good. It's definitely, they're not as strong. These are pretty good though. You also can't put them through too many layers of fabric. I had a fourth and I'm not sure what happened to it, uh, but these were an experiment. They're just really expensive, so I never used them. So we used these little guys the neodymium, super strong ones. And if you ever have these, the trick is to peel them off, like like, a, like wipe it off to get it. But they're so strong that you can, um, you know, they're, they're really, really strong. <laughs> so you can snap yourself, be really careful with them. Um, and I shop for these at a place called K and J Magnetics. And they're really cool. Like you just going to that site's really interesting. If you have kids or you're an educator or anything in that realm where you want to do something fun and different, highly recommend their newsletter and their site because they really have some really unique projects and stuff. It's really fun. Things that you probably haven't seen before. Good trivia with their stuff and um Anyway, I'll stop talking about them. <laughs> All right, I'm just gonna mark my, this, this um, chalk, this gray one, it kind of falls out of the chalk aligner. All right, I'm gonna put this right sides together. This isn't normally how I do a casing, but this is how I'm gonna do it. This needle is pretty gigantic for this fabric. I marked my stitch lines for the pockets because I'm about to cover up these notches in the seam. So that's why I just did that. All 
All right, I'm gonna understitch it. I'm gonna make, decrease my stitch length a little bit. how I'm attached this to the webbing, but I might just finish the edge and just top stitch it down. See this, um, this bobbin is, is really light right now. I'm gonna tighten it up. I use my thumbnail to tighten up the tension on the bobbin. <laughs> it works, you know? Yeah, they make gray. This is my, it's the white, the white um, case, but I bought gray this time. The web shop, yeah. I think it's because they have so much on there. Like the idea of, you know, rebuilding a site. Sorry, I'm gonna take out this stitch. This is pretty bad. The tension's really bad. I don't know why it looked good on my test. Yeah, they're, they're really interesting. I haven't gotten a newsletter from them in a while, but maybe I just unsubscribe so I don't buy from them anymore. Um, I'm a serial unsubscriber myself. But they would have really cool trivia like, um, did you know that if you had a car full of those magnets, this that special, special, uh, specific style, the neodymium, you could flip traffic lights if you were driving by. They have all kinds of things like that. Like some kids and anybody really, I mean, I obviously I'm not a kid and I was into it, find that stuff really interesting. And some of the little projects they have and um, are, are just really cool. That looks way better. There we go. I think it's like, okay, now I'm gonna tighten this up a little bit. Okay, there we go. I think we're on track. Yeah, all right. Okay, there's one. I think I'm just going to sew the casing and then thread the elastic through. And I'm gonna use this 3 8 inch stuff because I have so much of it. Okay. Probably should have pressed it, but eh. I can keep these edges lined up. A nice flat top edge. It's all gonna get scrunched up with my elastic. What was that noise? Okay, well it's okay. All right, so this one's ready and this one goes on that one, okay. I'm just gonna lay this across my apron. <laughs> I wonder which way it turns it. <laughs> you, you also can't have a pacemaker if you're sitting in that car. <laughs> I think it's all theoretical <laughs> as far as flipping the traffic lights. I don't know if they've actually done that. When I'm inserting elastic in a casing like this, I will, I don't know if you can see, but I kind of get it to the edge there. I don't kind of, I get it to the edge there. And now I'm going to sew across the end. I'm holding tension on this so it doesn't unhook. And now I'm going to pull this through like this. I always try and 
when I know it's going to snap in there, kind of out of practice there. So I use, I pull, let it sit out a little bit further and then I let it snap in how much I want and then I stitch it down like that. Evenly distribute it. And, um, oh, I need to attach this still. Shoot. Shoot! How do I want to do this? And I could do it on the underside, but what do you guys think? Do you think this would look good on this side? It's not functional. It's just a, a strength thing, you know? I like the way that looks better. That just means I need to stitch it down then. So let's go to the iron. I didn't check the iron camera though. Let's, let's uh, fix, sort it out. I'm gonna brighten it up a bit and bring up the sharpness. I'm gonna iron both of these right now. And I'm gonna iron my flap. I think I will, well, you know, yeah, I think I'm gonna edge stitch it because I already added the elastic to that piece. I could have sewn this, you know, right sides together, upside down, and then pulled it down like this and then edge stitched it. But I didn't really figure out the lining up of that. And now that it's all scrunched up, it's just gonna be a little not worth the trouble. I'll just iron it under and edge stitch it, which will be fine. I'm just gonna turn it under a quarter of an inch. So it's ready to edge stitch down. And do this one too while we're here. Gotta love all those threads, right? And let's put the I don't have that problem with the fusible interfacing when it's this Trico. That's why you see me using it for these little pieces so often. So Ray, um, I know you're here probably, but remember how you inspired me to make a whole like scene in my, my like recording software here so that I have like one just for when I record a video and I don't have to like hide all these things on my, so like I have these scenes, you know, it's like this one here has my face cam and the little frame and my little person here, which is in a weird spot. My website, right? I can, I can um, configure all that, right? And so I have, um, I have different, you know, like the iron scene, right? Well, when I record a video, I usually like right now all the alerts are hidden. So let's see. Oh yeah, I don't even have alerts on here because this is my story. So 
Um, usually I have uh, alerts, so like if someone subscribes or donates or whatever, it pops up on the screen, we all know that, right? And I hide that when I'm recording a video because I've definitely had to re-record video parts because the, the alert comes up on the screen. I hide the subscribe, like the subscriber count's not on there right now. Not subscriber, I mean, um, who, how many people are in the chat, um, viewers. Well, Ray, like she said something the other day, the other day and it just got clicked like, oh, I should just make like a, a scene just for when I record videos and one for when I'm live. I don't know how I did it, but I deleted my usual thing where I'm live and I couldn't find it anywhere. Like it's like not in the list there. And I didn't even notice it. <laughs> so I have to recreate that one, but I have now this one for recording a video. So <laughs> She gave me this great idea and I took it too far. All right, I'm just gonna change the top thread since we're gonna sew from the top and hopefully, hopefully the tension will be okay, right? I should have done this before I added the elastic. Remember I kind of hesitated and I was like, wait, why am I hesitating? I can just add that now. This is why. I knew I had to do something, I just forgot about it. All right, I don't see my bobbin thread there. I just have this long tail, there we go. All right, let's line it up here to the other side. And this is just so things don't poke through my pocket to give this kind of weak fabric. Well, it's not weak, but you know what I mean. It's not canvas. Give it some umph. But I could make it a little treat pocket too. <laughs> All right, there we go. Now that's ready to attach. Did the elastic do its job? Oh no, we need to, we need to cinch it more. Sometimes when you're cinching it a lot, you got to cinch the elastic, make it shorter than the space it's going to go. So it actually cinches the heavier stuff. <laughs> you didn't do anything wrong. You had that great idea to create like, you, without you knowing it, you had that idea to create a scene it's for when I record videos. I don't have to like hide the alert thing or, you know, do all that stuff. Well, I inadvertently deleted it, deleted my usual scene for recording video or not recording, but from when I'm live. Maybe this was better than I thought. Because this is at a kind of an angle. So it goes up like that. And this one's up here. Just do a little bit, okay. Just do a little bit, there you go. I just thought it was funny that I was like, oh, this is such a great idea, and I accidentally deleted my usual scene. All right, so now we have this pocket here, and this one here is the left. So it's not the phone one, right? The other one has the flap. Yeah, okay, I'm just making sure. So I'm gonna line this up here. Just sew it a little bit. Oh, and I'm gonna add a gathering stitch to this right here as well. We gotta gather it. Yes, I lost that. I lost all that. Yeah, I don't know what happened. I haven't figured, I, I haven't figured, uh, I haven't had the time to fix it yet. Wait, why isn't that gathering? Well, shoot. Should I pleat this? Maybe I should pleat this, not iron it. I mean, uh, not to gather it. Hmm, there's my gray, there's my gray. Sorry, my foot's on the, the floor, the pedal.
Yeah, I'll have to find you another little happy cat, Ray. <laughs> There's others. Okay, and where is my notch on here? There it is right there. Just lining up my notches, kind of figuring out what I want to do here. Yeah, I think maybe I'll pleat it. Instead of gather. It'll be flatter on the bottom, you know, something like that. Can't even see. Hey Priya, how's it going? Nice. Are you the person doing the cosplay? And who are you cosplaying? God, I love all the cosplay stuff. They do some incredible stuff. Jeez. Okay. Oh, I lost my little... Oh, no, I didn't. It's right there. I kind of just want to just turn it one way like this, you know? Let's see how that looks. <laughs> you will, Ray? Okay, cool. Thanks. Appreciate it. <laughs> I didn't create that animation, thankfully. I can get it again. We're okay. We didn't lose the cat. <laughs> Maybe what I'll do is do this. Cosplay is so cool. And I forgot I have this little like gaming Instagram account that um, I used to follow the cosplayers on it. And I forgot about that. Oh, you know what I just realized? My bobbin is white. This is about to show. Oh, that is awesome. I love it. I mean, you know, you, you have to do a minor character because then you know the, the true fans know who you are, right? And that kind of recognition is, it just feels so good. <laughs> it's like anybody could do Princess Leia, <laughs> you know? <laughs> Nothing wrong with doing Princess Leia, though. All right, I'm just gonna stitch my pocket section here. Reinforce it a little bit. I think I'm gonna do two rows. My stitch length is a little wrong right now. All right, here's this other one. Done. We just need binding. Right? See? Exactly. I know how it is. Especially when you're in a fandom or anything like that. Like, those are your people, you know? They're the only ones you can pick a, your favorite character, right? Or the one with the coolest costume. Doesn't have to be your favorite character. <laughs> Just has to be the one with the coolest costume. All right, you guys, wait. I have to decide what am I doing? Magnets? Hmm. 
I, I have to decide right now. I think we're going to do magnets. <laughs> I bet. Yeah, yeah, exactly. There's nothing like being in a costume anytime and not being comfortable. So you might as well be comfortable, right? I'm going to iron this really quick. It's funny how, like, when you think about um, costumes just in the more everyday sense of, like, Halloween and how we don't spend any money on them and then we're uncomfortable and, you know, kids have to wear them at school, then they have to wear them out on that night or whatever. And, uh, God, if you have to go to a couple parties, oh, might as well be comfortable. All right. Mm -hmm. I don't ever know what that scene's called because it's deleted. Okay, so let's edge stitch this. It's gonna be brown on the underside. I'm fine with that. I need a shorter stitch length. Come on, Sarah me. I did a really bad job turning a couple of those corners. Two rows. All right. Are we doing magnets? I think we're doing magnets. I mean, what am I saving these for? Oh, I don't have enough of these. I need two per, and I'm gonna do four. Oh, geez, I can barely pull those apart. So if I make a little like pocket, like let's stitch, maybe I could make a pocket and it's like, right? <clears throat> Right there. Those would be where my two magnets are, all right? So on the here, I have to create something for the other magnets to be. I just almost panicked there, okay. Right, so the other magnets are gonna be on here somewhere. Oh, you remember that little piece of fabric I had that I cut? Here, this. This will be a good facing right here. So here's my pocket. That doesn't look very gathered. Oh, did I not account for my pocket being gathered? I thought I did. Right. Let's put our, um, hmm. Let me think about this. Let's put our pocket together. Wait, wait, I need, I need, I actually do need to think about this right now. So where's that little piece here? So if this is here, I think I can make a facing like this, okay? It's gonna, all right. And we'll catch this in the pocket stitching there. All right, so let's, <laughs> I'm thinking of clever ways to clean finish this. I'm definitely not going about this the way I normally would. All right, it's okay. We're gonna put this right sides together like this. I feel like I need a pretty reinforced area for the magnets. 
Oh, right, Nancy, those things, oh. I don't know how anyone can rob a bank wearing something like that. That's skill, you know? All right, let's uh, change. Although, I don't know, I've been trying to get rid of, or used to wearing um, contact lenses the last few days. I'm getting pretty good at navigating the world with mediocre vision. <laughs> I got so excited this afternoon. I was like, oh my gosh, I can read my phone. It's all clear. And I realized I have my glasses on over my contacts. Womp womp. You know? Oh well. They'll get there, right? Tell me they'll get there. I really want it to work out. It'll be so nice. Okay. Let the little piece of fabric go. Let's use you. All right, so we're gonna do this right sides together again. We actually had rain today, which is so weird here. Oh, no, not that one. Not that. But it's been cloudy all day and it's just so nice. I really hope it's like that for tomorrow when we're working in the yard. All right, here we go. This piece goes this way too. We're under stitching this because it's the casing. <laughs> I did this in such a funny way. It'll work though. We just need something to give the magnets a little bit more um, structure because, well, they, they actually will rub a hole <laughs> I, am, I am so with you, Terry. You know those people that have the glasses that go. <laughs> I love those. I want those. And then there's this. There was this thing um, that this place used to sell, and they called it a loop, and it just looked like a necklace with a loop, and it was supposed to hold your glasses. I never understood what it was, but now I want to know what it was and how it worked. You know, I'm gonna put a piece of interfacing right here because this is where the magnets are gonna sit and, and I wanna reinforce that as well. Yeah, they're always smudged. Do you have glass um, lenses or plastic? Monovision. What does that mean? It's just one prescription? Um, let me just find a little piece of interfacing here. So many little cut pieces, but they're just not quite the right. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Oh, wait, is that right? Hmm. Hmm. I think this will work. Oh, you have plastic contacts? I think mine. Well, I was wondering about if what Nancy has because if she has to clean her glasses a lot, it could be um, the, the lenses are plastic and not glass because mine stay a lot cleaner when they're glass. I had so much trouble getting one of my contacts in today, but I've had such good luck this, I think I just got cocky, you know? All right. Right. 
really this needs to be, you know, I don't even feel like I needed this. I needed, I needed this in here. Oh well, it's done now. Let's just iron this while we're here. It'll make our casing look so nice. So right now I'm in my trial period and I have multi vision contacts, multi vision, multi, what, multi, I don't know, multiple prescriptions. So, <laughs> yeah, glass, if you don't have glass, they're, they're heavier, Nancy. Yeah, it's, it's heavier, but that's it. Okay, so I'm gonna put the elastic in here after I put this on, this little reinforcement here. Oh, look at how much this is pulling to the side, you know? Let's yank it down. Okay. I can kind of cover up that inequality down there with my piece. Multifocal. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> I'm a noob. I, I had to tell him several times. I'm like, you have to talk to me as if I've never even heard of contacts in my life because I've never paid attention to anything about them. I know nothing. <laughs> you know? Oops. And so I have a trial period right now. And she says that, oh, yeah, you're, you're not going to be able to see very well in them for a while. And I'm like, really? Really? But it's going to happen? <laughs> it's going to happen, right? I think if I can't see out of them by Monday, I'm going to call and just say, this is really going to happen, right? <laughs> All right, so now I need my um, casing for the elastic. Yeah, you're strong. You're walking around with heavy elastics on. Yeah, I, I love how lightweight the plastic lenses are, but... They are never, ever clear. Well, yeah, that's where I'm at, Terry. That's exactly where I'm at. They're kind of like, like I, I did pretty good today. I probably could have sewed, but I just felt like, mm, I was only wearing, supposed to wear them like six hours today. And I thought, you know, that six hours is up right when the stream begins. Maybe I shouldn't take a chance, you know? All right, we need to get the magnets in there. We need to decide where they're gonna be. Right, it's kind of far down there. You know? Well, they can be like the, they could be like down here. All right, so let's draw it on there. We need a pocket here and we need a pocket here. Okay, so I'm gonna make the sections of the pocket first. These will, this will show on the right side. I, I, by the way, this is not how, I, if I were making this a real pattern, this is not how I'd do this. I, I would do something a little different, but 
We're doing this kind of after the fact now that we're doing the magnets instead. Um, why does my stitching look so gosh darn big too? Um, are you allowed to wear your glasses with your contacts, Danny? That's one of my questions, because what I would really like is reading contacts and then, yeah, honestly, I just want to be able to read and, and see the screen right now, you know? <laughs> I just want it all. <laughs> Okay, so we're gonna put these into the pockets. I'm not too worried about positive and negative uh, yet because I'll, fix, I'll do the right, the correct thing when I do the flap. And so now I'm just going to, I can already feel I'm grabbing my throat plate. This feels a little over-engineered right now. <laughs> this is why the bobbin thread is just never as nice. You have no idea. Oh, okay. Yeah, I think I might ask about that. I, I'm having trouble cutting because of the <laughs> magnet. It's grabbing my scissors. Yeah, I would totally get the surgery if I could. They said it's possible, but it isn't very common and it's new with my prescription because I, I have a little bit of everything. So I'm like, new? That doesn't sound like for it's for me. <laughs> I don't need to be that girl. I don't need to be that trendy. <laughs> I totally lost this whole thread here. Let's see. I need this to be very secure because otherwise I will lose a magnet. This looks so much nice from this side. All right. Now, you see that? They're grabbing my... So let's see, it's my other two here. And I make it really obvious. Right? So if we want that there. We can make this pocket even smaller and this one too, now that we kind of have them in there. Let's make this pocket smaller. Ooh, let go. And then let's make this one a little smaller too. Ooh, I didn't like that. Okay. The, not LASIK, the, the one for whatever my prescription is. I really don't know much about it. He was like, oh, well the, Dr. Such and Such, who's like the head doctor there, the, 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 the eye surgeon there, was like, he has that, he, he has those kinds of contacts and he's had that kind of surgery or something like that. And I was like, okay. He's like, yeah, he's the only person I know. And I was like, <laughs> like I don't know. Okay, so let's see. Um, that's where the flap is gonna go. And so let's put this now we have a, a little better idea where we want this pocket. We want it right here. Like this. All right. Now I think I'll put my 
Do what color did I? I did brown. Okay, so we'll just we'll just switch to brown right now. Me, Michelle. Well, for me, they're brand new contacts, and I I can't I can't hundred percent see with them yet. So I have to put my readers on over, which I don't think is good. Yeah, right, Ray. That's how I am. I'm like, sign me up. <laughs> I'm tired of glasses hurting the sides of my head. I don't even have the strongest prescription, uh, but I'm so sensitive right here and I'm just really tired of the sides of my head hurting. No matter what I do, no matter, who, they're like, oh, well, I'll just adjust them. And it's just, they never stay and it just hurts. So it makes me really cranky. It doesn't actually make me cranky. I just sit there getting like, Oh, okay. Oh, what is Ray's friend? You have the monovision contacts and really like something. Okay, so where am I at here? I'll do this little pocket here. So I'm gonna sew my vertical channels again first. So um, straightforward in a clunky way. All right, and now we'll put our magnets in here. Let's get rid of as many of these threads as possible. Very, very methodical. And then double check. All right. So now we're just gonna sew them in there. I'll just go straight across the whole thing. No, I lost the, oh no, no I didn't. Okay, it's there. <laughs> I thought I lost it. The magnet's grabbing the machine. Come on. Not my favorite thing. Oh, you can see my my uh, bobbin thread is kind of showing a little bit there. Okay. When we had a really popular product called the pattern holder that took these, it was definitely um, something we got really good at. Yeah, exactly, Michelle. Yeah, that's so smart. <laughs> So you have monovision contacts and single vision lens that they can read over them for short distances. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> All right, so now we have our elastic in this casing and we can attach the, <laughs> we can attach the pocket Does it feel like our thing's almost done? Because it is. Uh oh, I haven't been keeping track of my loop turner. And it's so hard to see even on a good day. Oh, here it is, it's in my bin. It's not going to gather up much right here at this facing. My chair is very creaky. All right.
Don't twist it. Okay, so this one is kind of goes up, but this one over here doesn't. Okay. Hi, RG, how's it going? What's your name again? Yes, there it, oh, on the welt. Um, it's the one that's in the, it's in the first, um, uh, you know how that skill building session's in two? There's part one and part two. It's in part one. The well, po the po the flap is in part one in the very first section, and then the welt's in the second one. You know what they use at Mich Michelle? They use a box of hot sand. Oh, that's right, Randa. Okay, Randa. I feel like that's close, but it wasn't the same name I was thinking. <laughs> Um, and awesome, you're practicing your welt pockets. I like it. All right, where's the, okay, there's the slit, the little notch that goes there. I was gonna put a little, do I have white thread on? Man, okay. Yeah, it's a box of hot sand. That's how they do that. I want the box of hot sand. <laughs> the hair dryer though works. I think even hot water can. Our water comes out really hot. <laughs> I don't know. It's so true. We really have been like gadget talk. Plus we were doing cosplay too. It's, it's been a fun one. I really want to see the cosplay. <laughs> All right. I should have put a notch here. It's really helpful because what can happen is that you can kind of do this or this. And even though I have this little curve here, I, I really shouldn't trust myself to get it on here perfectly because this pocket's asymmetrical. This side is straight, you know, kind of it levels out. Um, it's not going to be as probably noticeable on this one, like as, as it would on the other one that is a, is symmetrical because I would get like a narrower distance here than on this side, but this one's very clearly, and this one has the flap too. Okay. See how this side's not going to elasticize very much, and I'm thinking that maybe I'll let this sit a little flatter. Anyway, we have the the magnets in there. Anyway. Okay, so let's get this kind of stitched on there. And then I'm going to take out this elastic down here and just let it relax a little bit more. Or get all of the gathers on the other pockets there. And right here, this one. All right, so I like that, you know? And then we're gonna put a pleat here. Don't you dare go anywhere, that little piece of glass. I don't want it to like suck in there. We can do, I lost both my stitches there when I did that.
I might pull this over a little bit like this. I'm gonna cheat a little. <coughs> Excuse me. <laughs> All right, so let's change to the brown bobbin so I'm not so worried then. Ooh, we get to do binding soon. Who likes binding? I haven't cleaned my bobbin case in a bit. Usually I blow it out with air, you know, and underneath. I used to do it every time. I was such a good sewist. But I don't sew nearly as much now, so, you know. All right, so let's get our divisions in here. We have this one goes here. And it goes up to here. I didn't mark my top like I did on the other one with the gray. Do, did we really let me get away with that? I guess we did, huh? I keep having this idea to print fabric when I'm doing something like this, like print fabric and, you know, print the item that goes in the pocket so you'd have a, your, you know, your, your pruners and your glasses and your gloves and a picture on each of the pockets. I've, I've always wanted to do that for the pocket bucket pattern. Just never gotten around to it. Okay, so I'm gonna... Right. Just pleating it flat. And then this one is, oh, I need to do my uh, division first, which is right here to right here. I know this one because I have the facing. And you can even do, like, like design that kind of fabric. Oh, shoot. And print it on your home compute, um, home printer. Is that gonna bug me? Yeah, it's gonna bug me. Eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper would be big enough for some things. You could always just do it on spoon flour too, but you know, it's a little less spontaneous. but you are kind of beholden to your printer ink. <laughs> you know, <laughs> your printer ink is a, you know. My presser foot's being pushed by the edge of this facing that I put under there. So I'm gonna try and keep my presser foot in line a little bit. There we go, it's a little straighter. You know, it's the, the contrast thread is never very, Great. Where are my little scissors at? Hmm. Oh, they're right here. Great. Okay. So this one didn't get really get cinched up though. So I think, oof. Where's the magnet right there? Hmm. I'm gonna do here. I have to, I think I'm gonna have to let the pocket hang off. It's gonna be flat, you know? And that means my magnets are in the wrong spot. Prototype, right? There's my magnet. I could put it right here. Just a little irked. Put 
put it right here. I'm gonna take out this right here, okay. We'll just take out a little bit more. And we'll make the pocket to the left of that one. Thread change. I'm gonna just pin this there, leave that right there, and get my flap right here. So what's gonna happen Because my, my pocket's going to be too narrow for this flap now. I hate it when flaps are the wrong size. Probably faster to just cut and sew a new one, right? Unless I um, edge stitch it. Let's see, where, what are we talking here? This needs to go right here, right here, and then this needs to end here. <clears throat> so I need to lose about an inch. So, Let's just cut down the amount of uh, seam ripping we're doing here. Just cut, take that out right here. And we'll take you guys out real quick. No way I could do these with my contacts, this right here. You can't even see what I'm doing, you know? It's so dark, why aren't you guys complain about that? Jeremy, can you brighten it up for me? I know you guys probably aren't watching really. I just feel bad that it's so dark. Is that too bright? <laughs> oh man. It's so dark. This is why I don't do, you know, dark colors. Okay, so I need to be probably about this far back. Okay. Let's get that little angle back in there. Not too bright, it's okay. Why aren't you letting go? There we go. It feels like such a weird time right now. Like I'm so thrown off by what time it is right now. You know? Oh yeah, you don't have to apologize. I know I'm here for company. It's not like it's a tutorial, right? It's a, not a follow along thing. I, 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 I should make things that are a little easier to follow along probably. <laughs> Let's see, is this enough that I can turn this now and just get back on track? I think so, let's see. All right. So let's see, will that, I mean, it's kind of the same shape. That'd be right about.
Where's this magnet at? What do I do with that? Oh, there it is. I feel a bit of asymmetry happening. <laughs> nah. I mean, it's kind of, it's, it's also because what happens is the sun changes a lot, especially at this later hour. <clears throat> and um, it's amazing to me because I, I record a lot um, at various times of the day. And it's really amazing when I'm recording this late in the day, how it almost gets unrecordable. Even though it seems bright in here, it doesn't seem like it's changed much in front of me. For something with the cameras and how it picks it up, it has a little trouble picking up as much detail, you know? I've definitely recorded several videos, thought I was completely done, then scrapped the whole project. When I went to edit it, I was like, you know what? I just can't, it's not good enough. All right, we're back on track, kind of. All right, let's um, get rid of this thread right here. A little rando thread, let's see what you're connected to to make sure you're not a problem. No, you don't look like a problem. Okay. Work on my point a little, just a little bit this time. I kind of got that. I, I'm actually kind of surprised that this looks roughly the same as the other side. Except this one feels like chunky in there. We'll just trim it. All right. Now let's top stitch. We have we have brown bobbin thread in, right? This isn't this is the thing. This isn't magnetic. <laughs> So many times I wanted to put something there before. Even my old machine wasn't. <laughs> it's kind of funny. Uh, other row of top stitching. That went a little too far. It's, it feels like you're sewing with um, through molasses because of the machine. The, Magnets grabbing the machine. All right. Now this one will be here like that. Okay. So we're gonna put this. Oh, um, I, we're just playing with the idea of using the magnets to hold the flap shut, the pocket shut with the flap, because, well, I don't want to use my magnetic snaps because I only have two and they're just so expensive and I'm not even sure about this little tool belt yet. It's kind of a fancy prototype. And then, um, you know, I really want to take this out, so I'm going to... Um, we looked at Velcro, I, w I was really on the cusp of doing that, but then, you know, we talked about how grass and dirt and dog hair gets in them, and th this is kind of a gardening thing, right? And then, um, what was the other thing we, we talked about, guys? Um, that I almost did. <laughs> I don't even remember. So, yeah, it's just a closure, that's all. Yeah. Oh, I had, that's interesting, oh well. I'm not even using like, 
probably the right snaps or uh, mag magnets for this. I have some sew-in style, but I don't want to use them for this because they're kind of a prototype. This flap is a hot mess, you guys. It is a really hot mess. Eliza! <laughs> How's it going? Elastic loop, yeah, and the button. <laughs> okay. All right, and then we're gonna trim off this extra. This extra. This pocket isn't gonna get gathers. All right, this little pleat can happen here. So let's see, where I'm at right now is we're going to finish this little pleat here. Um, we're going to get switched to white thread and then <clears throat> finish off this pocket at the top. And then we can bind it and put the buckle on. I was a little nervous trimming that and I, I didn't get very close to the edge. I can't go any further because I got to trim. I got to like secure that pocket with the magnet in it. There we go. All right, we don't have any more brown, right? Besides maybe the belt later, right? Oh, sewing stretches. I do, I do, Randa, I do. That's what the flap one is for. I, I did this because it was the way I could get it the biggest. <laughs> this is like a little buckle. <laughs> I need to, um, I don't have this magnet in the right spot quite yet, but maybe it needs to go right there. Yeah, so there's two half aprons like this. They're gonna buckle together here. So like, kind of like, um, like chaps. <laughs> oh, lighting is really unflattering. All right, I think that I, I know as soon as I say, it's the last time I have to change thread. I'll have to. There we go. Oh, I have that little carabiner. What do we think about that? I think that that could actually be somewhat handy sometime. So I do want to add that and I have that. See, I told you I, I would need the thread to be brown because I didn't do my little strap thing. Hmm, I could use webbing, I guess. This, I cut this off of something. Look, it's just like cut off. Hmm. Do I have like a narrow brown ribbon? I have bl black ribbon. Oh, nice, Randa. Well, you're on your welt pocket journey right now. Oh, I'm sorry, I keep touching that thing. I know, it's really annoying. All right, let me finish this. Um, magnetic thing going on here. All right. All right, so this one is secure, but this one is not. 
And we have our little, little magnet. Yeah, that would, that, that'll fit right next to it. Perfect. Okay. And we want it to be going up. Okay. Trim this. That and this is going to go right into this pocket. Don't flip it. And now double check it. Yep, okay. Hold it in there. Stop grabbing my presser foot. All right. Why does it look so crooked? Is this just a optical? Look at how, what a hot mess this is. Okay, there we go. All right, we need to put the flap on. <laughs> I gotta change my thread. The, the, the flap is still too uh, big, but you know what? Maybe I'll wait till I bind it and then I'll just sew the flap on through the binding there. All right, so that means, what did I just say? Oh, the carabiner pocket. All right, so we'll do that. So let's just bind this. Should I do matching binding? matching binding or this one? I think the contrast might be better. This is a little too matchy match. Okay. There we go. Yeah, me too. I like the mixed prints too. I'm just gonna bind this edge. Finally, to something nice and straightforward. It's grabbing my machine there. Get all these threads to the edge here. Pleats are a little thick, but better than gathers. I like it flatter. <laughs> oh, you all said matching. I'm sorry. <laughs> I can really uh, take advantage of that YouTube delay, can't I? <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Eliza and I were like, contrast. Okay, done. <laughs> I know, right, Ray? It will be really helpful tomorrow. I'm really looking forward to it. Um, my bobbin is brown. I 
I noticed, I was like, huh, look at that nice, perfect brown line to cover. It's my apron. <laughs> but I asked, you know, I asked your opinion, so I respect it. You guys have steered me in some really good decisions, choices. I'm getting punchy, sorry. <laughs> you like the con I like the contrast. Like I, I used to be so much crazier, you know, with that kind of thing. But um, I like it because it, it, they set each other off, you know. I think of binding as like a frame. And so if you kind of notice of it, it, but more, more it's just to enhance the other print. Oh, I pulled a little too much on my curve. I usually always pull on the curve to make it really easy, but I may have pulled a little too much this time. It might curl a little bit, especially with that pleat. Oh yeah, I really did. There we go. Oh, someone's here. Someone's here at 6.30 on a Saturday. What? There's one. So exciting. <laughs> yeah, right, Randa, exactly. That is a good point. Being able to see what I'm doing. I, it's, it's funny because sometimes I think like, if I really wanted to do good tutorials on, on actual garments, I would be sewing it out of fabrics that, well, and I do. I, I, I really focus on what will look good on the camera, especially on an uploaded video, but there's only a point. Like sometimes I'm like, okay, I don't wanna just buy fabric for this because it's not like I have a budget, you know? <laughs> so then I have to be beholden to what I have on hand. And even if I do shop for fabrics for a project, it can be really hard to find the right thing for the camera. I always wanna use the chambray that I have, but the chambray, the camera hates it. It does this weird pixelated thing. It's not even that it's pixelated. I, I don't know, it's it's picking up something about the weave and it just really hates it. Um, and I know if you've like seen like my sleeve plaque video, that's in there. Pretty sure that's what I use. But yeah, it's hard. You know, something like this light obviously doesn't show up. It's too washed out this print. I, I noticed when something looks really good on camera, like when I sewed that, you guys remember when I sewed the lawn, the very first laundry basket and it was like the spoon flower print I'd gotten and it was kind of a fake linen background. So I had like a cross hatch thing going that was very, very subtle, kind of grayish. But the print on it was pink, different shades of pink leaves. Very simple, very simple fabric. And it was cute, it was sweet. Um, but it looked so good on camera. <laughs> and I don't wanna sew everything in pink, but it just made me go, ooh, maybe I should look for more things like in this range, you know? And sometimes it's just like the day, the lighting's really good or whatever. And weirdly, like, I always gravitate towards teals. And teal makes every my camera pick up on it and turn everything pink around it. I don't know why. Always teals. That's awesome, Nancy. You only use magnets for pattern weights. That's great. Be 
be so nice like if you really don't want your fabric to slide around you got like a slippery stripe or something or rayons it's pretty smart so what what does a sheet a piece of sheet metal cost nancy and how big is it like what are we talking <laughs> i'm curious and do you have like a cutting mat like me like the um the white kind or are you putting it under like an ulfa tell us more nancy and will you write an article in the guild about it <laughs> Oh, this I did not trim this enough here. Oh no, I did, but my tack seam is really high up there. I'm gonna have to get rid of some of that. Right up here, this right here. Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, I, it just takes practice. I, I'm happy to explain what I'm doing if you want. I just feel like I've explained all of you so many times that you're sick of hearing my tips about it, you know? I love talking about binding. <laughs> but, you know, if a quilter watches me, it's a different story. They, they bind completely differently, and they're just masters at it in a completely different way. So... I can't even see this stitch on this side. Well, there's this one right here, but that's different. Hmm. All right, well. I'm just getting rid of this thread it was going to show I tacked something along the line and it just was just outside my binding seam Yeah, that is, that is such a cool idea. And so also I wanna know more about your pattern weights that are magnets. Cause didn't you buy like a system, like some sort of magnetic system, Nancy? And so you're just, are you just using the magnets from that now and just expanding the size of the cutting area? <laughs> She's probably trying to type a long thing and speech to text or she's like, I'm gonna get my keyboard out. <laughs> I'm gonna finally switch to my computer. <laughs> the hardest part about sewing canvas for me is letting go of all of the fuzz. Look at all the fuzz everywhere. Canvas is kind of terrible, especially this one. And I, I used, I've sewn a lot of this canvas. We always ordered from this company for this. But um, it picks up everything. All right. Looking cute. Let's trim some of my backstitch threads here. All right, so what are we thinking about this like carabiner loop majiggy thingy? This is kind of loose right here. See, like, like fuzz. All right, so we need brown thread on for that. Um, and to make the loop that I'm thinking about making and to do the belt. So I think now we're past, I'm not gonna put a label on this either. I have thought of that. Let's put the brown thread on. Okay. 
I'm getting pretty low on the brown thread. All right, so let's place our flap. We're gonna do it about right here. That's my plan. All right, so I'm gonna turn it over. Oh man, look at all this thread. Look at all this thread. I always pinch a little bit. When I, when I draft these under pocket flaps, I pivot out a tiny bit like this. I just, you know what, it's gonna do this. So I, I just get rid of it rather than, you know, getting all these little tucks. I'm gonna trim this down. I like to enclose it. Let's make sure it's still working. Yeah, okay. I'm gonna enclose that little seam. and clean. Get rid of these threads that make me lie. Get rid of this. We know my flaps are kind of a hot mess. Oof, those magnets. Stop it. I'm so excited. Can't wait to see it. It's a regular cutting mat, regular brand, but like Ulfa. Okay. And it's three by four and I had to buy two sheets to put under my mat and it cost me 73. So you needed two sheets so that it'd be strong enough for the magnets. Yeah, that's fine. You can be on speech to test. I thought, kind of figured. <laughs> okay. So now we just need to attach these to the buckle. Um, and the webbing. So let's, let's double check this. All right, so let's see, what do I have here? So that's the adjustable side. So we're gonna attach this side. Now you could do something like, like a casing, you know? make your apron big enough that you could stick the webbing in, in a casing and then it would kind of slide around. But <clears throat> I wanted as little bulk as possible. There's a lot of times where I will wear, um, like they have these like chaps for when you're weed whacking and when you're using a chainsaw, like when we rent a chainsaw, <clears throat> we have a chainsaw, but we have to rent a really big one for some of the stuff we're doing. They give you chainsaw chaps. <laughs> you just wear over your clothes. And so that's already kind of bulky. And so I was like, okay, maybe I could still wear this on. I probably wouldn't, to be honest, not when I'm using the chainsaw. I don't use the big one. I don't want to. And I, I like that idea because the casing idea, because you could adjust this. Because right now I'm gonna kind of have to figure it out. You know, it does make it, I could put, I could put belt loops, you know, like I could put um, loops, finish this edge and then just put loops that it hangs off of. That's kind of an idea. 
Oh, those are cut. I thought those weren't cut. But this right here is not cut. All right. So let's put this on here where I think they're going to go. And see how close I am. So this one is adjustable, but I know that this isn't very long. Hoping this is big enough for me. Yes, I remember that, that expensive magnetic cutting mat. And so what's wrong with that mat? Is it just not big enough? Uh oh, Sewing Fairy's trying to tell me something. That was definitely like a Sewing Fairy type of unthreading. Let's just hold this up. Ooh, I'm so excited. Okay. Oh no, that'll work. Okay. I feel like adjustable would be good, you know? Like a bag strap between the back sides. Oh, you mean like back here? Like cut that apart and make it adjustable? I think like fixing it, making it non-adjustable isn't the, the greatest idea. Like I, it will be adjustable in that I can kind of cinch this together more or less, but um, I can't really adjust where these are gonna sit on me. So I think if you're doing this, you, you might wanna make like a casing. Oh, it kind of slips around. The things we'll do for sewing, man, right? <laughs> I'd like two sheets of metal, please. <laughs> All right. Oh, I just got a, like a whiff of something that smells really good. So I'll bet the the neighbors here. Really has big smells. Twisted. Whoa, need to move my chair. It sits so much further apart in the back, doesn't it? Than I thought. Probably because I have it a lot lower. And I want it towards the front. Okay, I think I like this. Okay, so, but if it was buckled. This dress is so chunky. All right, so I think I can move this back a little bit more. Oh, I'm so excited. Maybe I need to just make this belt smaller. I didn't cut it down or anything and I just assumed it would be too, too small for me if I did. Yeah, yeah, it, it is adjustable but I can't slide the apron. So I'm gonna put these closer together. 
going to slide this one over. Um, it's the, um, Willow Tank by Greenline Studio as a dress. So it has the little pleat right here. That's why it looks so chunky. Plus it's this really thick fabric, this uh, Kanta fabric. And I added pockets right here. It's, it, it's, it's pretty sturdy. The fabric though, even though it is, um, pretty like thick, you know, it, it does have a lot of drape to it. And I used the top half is on the grain and the, the skirt is on the cross grain because I was really utilizing every scrap of fabric because I didn't want to buy very much because it's not the cheapest fabric. How's this look? The, dre the dress is making it kind of hard with the pleat in it. I think I can still get this closer together too, but I think I need to move it back just a little bit more. Uh, no, it's not a uniform tunic. I wore one of those yesterday though. Oh no, the day before yesterday. <laughs> Oh, I see Nancy. No two smaller sheets, so it equals the size of my mat because otherwise it has Oh, okay, got it. That makes sense. All right, so I'm just gonna move this two inches back again, like that. Um, yeah, that was the thing is like, I was like, oh, I don't wanna miss out on this. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, it's right up here. Thanks, Michelle. That's the thing is like this dress isn't good for a microphone. What I need to have is like a little ribbon that hangs off and I clip it to that or something. <laughs> you know? All right, so I'm going to cut off some of this webbing. Yeah, I want to I want to be um, able to squat, you know, Randa? I want to be able to squat down and I don't lose things. You know how like your apron will flare up and then dump out like it goes up upside down because something in the pocket's so stiff and I, I don't want something to poke me. <laughs> so I'm going to do this so that it doesn't come unthreaded. And now this is my spacing here. All right, so how are we gonna attach it? <laughs> I think that I'm just gonna sew it right sides together, fold it down and top stitch it. What if you clip it to the armhole? Is it too much right now? Um. I do have one solution. Okay, so I think I'm going to do it right sides together like this. Wait, is that what I want to do? No, I want to do it like this. So it's going to look like, let's make our binding flush. Oh, 
Oh yeah, sorry about that. It's, it's so boardy right here. This whole, this, <laughs> yeah, that's why I don't wear this dress a lot. Like it's really comfortable, but there is like something about it. I, I feel like it's gonna be stiff and it's it's really not. It's, it's a really comfortable dress. And I, I don't think it's like the most like um, figure flattering dress, but I actually doesn't, I don't mind it. Like I love how like straight it is. It's, I don't know. He might, I know, right, Michelle? He got overalls already, right? He's doing okay. Okay, so this is how I want this to be enclosed like this. So that's what I want. I want to do it, I want to lay on it like this. I'm going to sew it like this and then turn it and then top stitch it down. We'll see. Let's see here. The hilarious thing is this magnet is strong enough to flip stoplights, but it won't hold these pins. All right. So I have the um, tropical shirt. <clears throat> Speaking of menswear, <laughs> segue, right? I have the tropical shirt pattern. And I'm gonna sew that by Wardrobe by Me patterns in July. I'm also, yeah, exactly, Barbara. I'm also going to sew the summer pants as shorts by them because um, Wardrobe by Me, by Me asked me if I would sponsor a stream, which is kind of fun. Um. What other patterns do we want to do? We need to start thinking about our, our menswear lineup so I can be ready. What was that? What was that? What was that noise? <laughs> that scared me. Oh, the mouse. The mouse is gone. Rest in peace, mouse. I don't even know where it's at. Hopefully it didn't end the stream, huh? Good thing I have a touch screen. All right. See, nice and smooth on the inside. Clean, clean. Let's see how it looks on the right side. Yeah, that looks nice. Little little thread. Resident mouse. The the like computer mouse. <laughs> the computer mouse. Yeah, my resident mouse. <laughs> All right, uh, how did I do that? <laughs> I sent this video to my sister yesterday. This girl made a, apparently she has a pet spider. I don't know, I don't know who this person is, but her, her little post popped, popped up, popped up in my feed. And she made like a little playground jungle gym for this little spider. <laughs> Speaking of like resident creatures. <laughs> My sister hates spiders. <laughs> so I'm always looking for funny things. You know how you can get, uh, if you have an iPhone, you can do this thing where you can um, create screen effects when you text someone. And one of them, you can make it so that it, like, say you typed the word um, super, it'll do super, 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 super all over the screen or something like that, right? And there's, like, fireworks and balloons and all kinds of things you can do. Um, well, one day, there, you know, I took the spider emoji, <laughs> and I did that. I did the, um, and it would just look like her screen was crawling. <laughs> she was so mad at me. <laughs> I am terrible about it. She's got a good sense of humor about it. 
I got this fabric one year. Do you guys remember that cotton and steel fabric by, Ru by the Ruby Star Society gals, which were then cotton and steel? And it looked like lace, but it was spider web. Spider web that turned, looked like lace. And it, so it just looked like lace, but you realize it's spider web. And there's a spider very occasionally on this fabric. Not, it, it seemed very random. And I made her something and I put that spider, just so you could see it just on the inside. And she's like, that thing, I'm like, yeah. You know, I didn't grow up having like a, a, like a brother and sister when I was little. <laughs> So I got to do all that stuff now. <laughs> she, by the way, doesn't do that stuff, but she is, oh my gosh, she would be the biggest to do things like that. She just doesn't to me. I don't know why. All right. Well, I got to find my mouse now if I want to go home. Yeah, I think that the, the um, I'll probably want this adjustable. I can't. Good thing I have a touch screen. Like be able to slide them. Ooh, I'm so excited. Don't I look great in my dress? So I can make this, you know, I can adjust this tighter too, which I kind of need to. <laughs> I have shorts on, don't worry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, I got it at my local quilt shop. I, uh, I Googled it when we were in the Zoom this morning, but um, I spelled it wrong. And I was like, why isn't anything really showing up? K-A-N-T-H-A though, you got it right. This turned out cute, I'm happy. Over-engineered, maybe. No, you know who's gonna want one? My mom, my mom's gonna want one. Oh, I can't. Yeah. Bye, Ray. <laughs> oh, I'm so excited. I'll take some pictures when I'm out in the yard tomorrow. Sawing wood and stuff. Doing farmy stuff. All right. Well, I'm going to hang it up here. It's already seven. Four hour live stream late Saturday. Thanks for coming. I know it's a weird time. Next week, I'm making the Sequoia Cargo Pants uh, by Itch to Stitch Designs, if you want to join me. Um, I'm cutting them on Wednesday and sewing Thursday and Saturday. And the next week after that, Shenanigans Skort by 5 Out of 4 Patterns, which I'm an ambassador and an affiliate for. And I'm making those kind of utility skirt-ish. So I'm making the outer, the skirt part, I'm making it in a stretch woven, not a knit. So it'll be a little bit um, more sturdy and I'm gonna put some pockets and stuff in it. Cause that is a pretty basic uh, skirt pattern, but I love it. I'm already wearing the heck out of it. And then um, after that, I'm making the overalls, partner overalls by, by um, Ready to Sew Patterns. And then James shirt, which I don't have any picture there, sorry, out of a UPF sunblock fabric. So I'm making a capsule wardrobe to all in this month, so. Yeah, awesome, I'm so glad you guys came, thank you. And I will see you guys, oh, it's raining. I'll see you guys next week for the Sequoia Cargos by Itch to Stitch Designs on Wednesday, 11 a.m. Pacific. Oh my goodness, Libby, that's a lot. Do you have a big thing going on? Yay, Ray, nice. Yay. Oh, it's raining. How exciting. <laughs> Anna's still here. Wow. Cool, yeah. I'm kind of like, maybe I'll fit those on stream. I don't know. I could. 
They have a ribbing waistband, rib waistband. So I think that's kind of neat. All right, thanks for coming, you guys. I'm hoping I can end my stream without my mouse because I don't know what happened to it. It's under my foot pedal or something in pieces. So. Oh, that's right. Oh, enjoy. Happy birthday to your mom, Libby. He's gonna be there in 10 minutes. <laughs> wow, Ray. Quick, clean the house. <laughs> nice. Well, thanks for coming, you all. Have a great weekend. Happy sewing. Um, if you're interested in the guild, sosoguild.com, check it out. Join us there. It's really, it's really chill and fun. I, I totally I wouldn't lie to you. So I'll see you guys soon. I gotta reach over here. Bye.